So with every controversy, there is two sides. And for each side of the controversy of the Pledge of Allegiance, we chose the traditionalist versus the progressive. The traditionalist, we chose Rochester from our class readings. Rochester was very right on our left-to-right continuum. Considering himself for a very long time to be a member of the Democratic Party, he now claims that liberalism has abandoned him. One of the quotes from his reading says, The current generation of young people may set a new standard for both civic disengagement and civic misinformation. The other side of our controversy is the progressive side. For this, we chose author and scholar Beth Rubin. Beth focuses on civics education for students and how civic identity takes shape within local contexts marked by historical and contemporary inequalities. A quote from her reading is, Con- Content is always shaped and framed by people. It is always deeply political, even when it is adamantly apolitical. It is intimately connected to people's lives. Even when most assiduously disconnected, it is felt intimately and distinctly, and it is closely related to oppression, liberation, and understanding. We see a national divide in our country today over this topic. A lot of students are given the choice to say the pledge or not, while in other states, they must stand and participate in the pledge. Out of all 50 states, 32 states have laws or guidelines that specifically say students can opt out of the pledge on their own. Another 15 states have statutes that are unclear, delegate the choice to local schools or parents, or seem to indicate students must take the pledge. And in three states, including Iowa, Vermont, and Wyoming, they don't even have state pledge laws. Even the states that require the pledge, there is allowance for students to not recite it. For example, in Hickman High School here in Columbia, every morning when students get ready for the pledge, the announcers say, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you wish to remain seated, please remain quiet while others observe this right. It is obvious not all states are on the same page when it comes to this topic. Representative Shane Roden is one individual who believes that reciting the Pledge of Allegiance should be an everyday affair. Roden introduced House Bill number 1750 in 2016, which stated that every Missouri school supported by public money shall recite the pledge no less than once per school day. While the bill progressed through the House, it ultimately died in committee. Roden said reciting the words every day would instill in students the value within the Pledge of Allegiance. Court cases and events in the news. In 2014, the Massachusetts case, Jane Doe v. Acton-Boxborough Regional School District, involved a group of parents, teachers, and the American Humanists Association in action against the school district. The group claimed the pledge required, including the use of the words under God, violated the Equal Protection Clause of the state's constitution. The state Supreme Court didn't agree. As for news, a Florida student refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then the substitute said, if you don't like it here, you can leave. The the situation escalated after the student called the country racist, and eventually the student was asked to leave the classroom. Then proceeded to make threats to the administrator as he was escorted out. The student faced misdemeanor charges. Okay, so do you feel that teachers, and especially social studies teachers, should teach the history of the Pledge of Allegiance to students? I do think it is important during this political climate um, to teach the history and the importance of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I think you've got to talk about the two different sides that is happening right now, the debate that's going around with the pledge. Um, I think it is our responsibility to teach students those things from a bipartisan perspective. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so if it is the responsibility of social studies teachers, which you said it, it kind of is, how can it be implemented into a cultural, into curriculum in a culturally responsive matter? So we're currently doing politics and elections right now. And so we've been looking at controversial issues, immigration, abortion, euthanasia, vaccines, all of these things. Um, and I was actually going to put the pledge on there, the pledge in schools on there. However, I think we're going to hit that when we study the judicial branch and when we study court cases. Um, So I think it could go into either one of those units. Um, Studying it now, like politics and elections, we would study the controversial aspect of it. So we would look at how conservatives view this issue and how maybe liberals view this issue. 
Um, and, and then I think that would be really cool to have students take a stance. Like, do you think that you would you should be required to say it or do you think that that is a right that you can reserve like all those things right um i think that though we'll probably hit it when we do our judicial branch just because we pick a lot of court cases that impact students lives and impact students at school specifically um so i think that that would be cool like you said there's a lot of court cases about it so to hit it then i think would be i think would make the most sense Okay, and then um, I just wanted to put in here, does Battle High School give students the option to not stand? Yes, I believe so. 